and you got to pull it out. <laughs> the same amount of time it takes for him to run 21 feet. Change the scenario. So even at this distance, even where you see the knife, even where your gun is out, he's still gotten you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We can really see that knife right there, and we can get, you know, I've got a lot of time, and I'm on my front side, and I can take shots. Well, then that distance would be okay, right? But uh, in most real street probably, situations, that's not. even farther back, right. Calm down. Change Calm the down. scenario to a smaller female assailant, and you gain a little more time, but not much. And this doesn't factor in the officer's experience and adrenaline level. If there's cover, or if people are in the line of fire, then add to the officer's duty belt. The more things you add to the holster or to the duty belt, that delays the officer's response by 50% of reaction time. It's easy, says Martinelli, to say officers like the St. Louis police have other options, but that doesn't mean every officer involved shooting is justified. That assailant poses an imminent, not potential, poses an imminent threat to that officer of serious bodily injury or death. Ken, that's pretty incredible. I mean, and you start to make two seconds to get the gun out of the holster and someone could run 21 feet in that time. I mean, it's, we see there's virtually no time, but, but what about other tools that Officer Wilson may have had at his disposal? The taser, law enforcement uses them, pepper spray. Why not in this case? In lethal force, Aaron, pepper spray is just not an option because you have to be so close and it can be ineffective. And we've heard a lot of talk about the taser. Why not try that? Well, Martinelli says you have to be about 20 feet away from the assailant. And according to him, because of operator error, it only has about a 60% effectiveness rate. So in the situation where you're faced with potential deadly use of a weapon attacking an officer, he says that police officer training will be to go for the gun. Unnecessary, necessary, reasonable. You were questioning when lethal force would be required. Currently, it's reasonable, a reasonable threat. They want to change it to it's necessary because the threat is imminent. You saw 21 feet. How much time that gives the officer to draw, to be secure. 21 feet. And a person can close that distance, reach you, and hurt you in that amount of time. And that's if you train and you're proficient with drawing your weapon and shooting, you just might get a shot off. A knife. That was the threat. The person was wielding a knife. Equal or more force. You want to counter the threat with equal or more. So does that mean you should have pulled out a knife? No, no, of course not. But a knife is considered lethal. So your lethal option is your firearm. Can you draw it and squeeze up around in two seconds? Too many variables. Too many damn variables. So think about that. We have a use of force simulator over at the Lindsay campus where we play scenarios like this one and we watch your reaction. You get to actually interact with a scenario. Do you draw and shoot? Should you went for a taser? Should you grab a baton? What options should you have used to counter the resistance? I was about 50-50. So far, the results from student interaction, about 50-50. We trained with it, uh, with the uh, provider. I can't think of the name of the company, but they came down and they demonstrated. We walked through a whole bunch of scenarios. And the guys that did the best were, uh, was a training sergeant out of, Rialto, is it Rialto? Is that the name of the town? Where did Ferrar come from? You guys know that? I think it's Rialto. There's a city. He was a chief over there. It was one of his guys, uh, Sergeant. Guy was good, but that's his job. He's a trainer. He works with these people. The rest of us were, eh, we did okay, but he was very good. So proficiency. The regular average street cop doesn't get enough training. 
And that's the problem. Uh, they just don't have these type of, the type of equipment needed. We have them. We have the simulator. It'll be available hopefully on the 12th. We're going to get on the 25th for the uh, job fair, career fair that we're doing over in the Menifee campus. Okay, so put yourself in that place. What would you do? A person is coming at you. Uh, there's one that was uh, mentally, I think they said, something mental with a person. You know this person from previous contacts. You know they suffer. They're mentally ill. You're trying to get, you're talking them down. You're trying to get compliance. But this person is threatening you. He is inside that 21 foot comfort zone. Has a knife in their hand. What are you going to do? Are you going to shoot them? There's no right or wrong answer, guys. I can't tell you. That's your call. Are you going to shoot this person or not? It's your call. Hopefully, I'll never have to make that decision. I talked earlier about the required amount of force to meet and overcome. Here's the uh, textbook definition for excessive force, meaning Force was needed, but you used too much. You used in excess the amount of force you should have used. Okay, so it's the application of an amount or frequency of force greater than that required to compel compliance from a willing or unwilling subject. Excessive force is commonly referred to police brutality. You get a situation, you need compliance. I chose to use a taser, Zzz, knock them down, put them in restraints. Pretty straightforward, injuries are minimal, not a bad choice. Jackie likes to use her baton. Same scenario, she draws her baton out, executes some forward uh, reverse power swings strikes the subject in the ribs, on the kneecap, on the hip, does a good number on him. Finally, he complies. She puts him in restraints. Same situation. I use the taser, she used brute force. Who do you think is gonna have more trouble justifying their use of force? Think about it. Jackie is, the baton. It was still justified, it was required, and they were executed properly, but it just doesn't play good. You gotta keep that in the back of your mind. How is this going to be viewed? Baton is never, or rarely, a good choice when uh, using less lethal. So less lethal, that's your textbook definition. Force that has less potential for death or serious injury than do traditional tactics. It doesn't say it won't kill though, right? No, it just has less potential. Because any type of force can result in death. Anyone. We found that out the hard way. Restraints, sprays, impact weapons, tasers. And then I added that last line because the publisher didn't put it in there. But less lethal can be fatal. It has happened. Oh, God. I want to say it was Corcoran State Prison. Used a taser on an inmate that had a bad heart. Killed him. It was the only reason they didn't get hammered because the uh, medical condition wasn't uh, known in the record. It was unknown. After the death, they found out, oh, you know, by the way, he did have a medical problem. We didn't know. Questions about force, less lethal or excessive? Deadly. That's force. You can reasonably expect someone's going to die or 
cause serious bodily injury. Taking life is a seizure which must be reasonable. This comes out of police uh, training manuals, this language. Taking life is a seizure that must be reasonable. That is what's coming under uh, attack right now as we speak. They want to change that to must be necessary. Must be necessary. Cont what is, without reading any more, I'll stay right here. <laughs> I'm about to block What do you think is the contagious fire syndrome or phenomenon? Phenomenon. Contagious. Yeah. Like when you uh, see your partner shooting at somebody, you kind of just under in stress, you start shooting as well. Uh, pretty much, yeah. It's the adrenaline. It's the adrenaline. Uh, when they, you heard the shots being fired. The camera didn't show that, but you could hear the shots. It wasn't boom. Boom. It's continuous. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. The, the uh, amount of pressure on the trigger is about six pounds on the semi-automatic weapon. About six pounds. It's not that much. The uh, revolver is usually 12, 13, almost double what it would take on the semi-automatics. What happens, your adrenaline gets to pump. You shoot once, and you're not even sure you hit anybody. So you just keep pulling that trigger. Media gets a hold of this. Two officers involved. They shot and killed a suspect within that 20 foot, 21 foot comfort zone. Okay. Shot and killed, boom. Medical personnel determined the suspect was hit nine times. Right there, you think, why would they shoot him nine times? That's not called for. You would say, well, why would you just shoot him in the leg? Right? Well, they had a knife. Shoot the, shoot the knife out of them. Shoot, shoot them in the hand. We only see that in weird movies. No in old westerns, yeah, that doesn't happen, huh? No distress. You don't just think, oh, I'm going to aim at the lady to restrain him. My life's in, on the line. That's one thing. They are stressful. The adrenaline's pumping. They're not trained that way. Has anybody been to a range shot at a silhouette recently? Okay. You either have the bottle, right, that covers the point, the strikes, or it's a target, a circle. And they have certain numbers. I can't remember the numbers are. The circle, the kill zone's right here on the X, in the middle. In the bottle, which most agencies use now, the head is worth five points. The center mass is five points. As you go out, it goes to four, then to three. The hand's worth, I think, one. We're not trained to shoot to wing. The shoulders don't even count. We shoot right here, center mass. And when you're under pressure, you're going to resort to your training. You're going to draw and boom, 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 boom. You don't even have to see where you're shooting. You don't have to bring it up and use a sight. You shoot from right here. It's called instinctive. Instinctive shooting keeps you alive. Boom. That's how it works. The person who gets the first round off wins the fight. If you sit there and say, put your gun down, put your gun down, put your gun, you're going to die. Uh, we train our officers, if you're going to unholster that firearm, it's because you're going to use it. Not as a deterrent. Stop or I'm going to shoot you. There's no talking. That weapon comes out, you're squeezing the trigger, go to work. That's deadly force. Continuous, contagious fire. Officer shoots. The proclivity for others to do so is extreme. What am I missing? My partner is shooting. I better get my gun out and start shooting too. But what are we shooting at? Oh, but he's shooting. The more cops you get, the more rounds get fired. It is contagious. Extra shots are often involuntary reactions under stress. If given the time to analyze the situation, these officers most likely would not have fired. But that's the key. There is no time. You're in a shootout. There's return fire coming back at you. You're going to be squeezing that trigger. Guaranteed. 
avoiding use of force related problems. There's a process they use to hire law enforcement and they screen and screen and screen. They're looking now not only at your truthfulness, but also your emotional state. During the background investigation, they want to know you can make good, rational decisions under pressure. You don't overreact. You react properly. Uh, officers' rights in use of force lawsuits, called purity. Officer must be told that they retain their constitutional rights and that they, uh, that any information provided cannot be used in criminal proceedings brought against the officer. It's called POBAR. That's not up there. It's called POBAR, P-O-B-R, Peace Officer Bill of Rights. And you, you'll get that at an academy. We'll explain to you. If charges are brought against you by representation, uh, pay status, things like that. You also have rights. Okay. That's all you gotta know. Garrity, and it protects peace officer rights. So, what if you were a police officer in the use of force training? Would you be hesitant to shoot or confident on your ability to make that split second decision? Boils down to what would you do? What would you do? I don't have a simulation to show you. But let's just think about it. I used a scenario earlier that you responded to a domestic violence call. As you entered the house, you saw the female with a knife and she stabbed the male suspect two, three times, then put the knife down. The suspect fell to the ground, was bleeding out. Now, let's use that scenario. You enter the home because you heard cries for help. But what you see is the female holding the knife and the male telling her, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hands up in a defensive gesture and she's yelling, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. You're the officer standing there and you're watching this. What would you do? Think about it. What would you do? Two people, one without a knife, threatening to kill the other. I'm from here, I'm the girl stabbing my man. Get ready, I'm gonna stab my man. And this is the best He cheated on me, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. Your part? I'm gonna kill him. Come on, bro. You're, you're, okay, great, so we'll go with that. You, you, what would you do? Um, I'd probably talk to her because she's, I feel like she's under a lot of emotional distress. Yeah. So she's not even thinking right. But she's not. What's, I feel like it's just like her talk to her, like not thinking right, putting that yeah. down. And you know, if she doesn't, then I guess try to resort to what would she really ever do if it resort to force? But then it's okay. like, okay, we'll talk. So if it gains to that point where you had to resort to force, which option would you use? Probably taser. Taser, and you said taser too. Mm -hmm. and then you and yeah. needed fire. Okay. I'm gonna kill you. You said don't. So I was, why? And I turn towards you. My intention is focused on you. Why? Are you on his side? All you men are the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ad libbing you. Actually, I'm going back to a previous life. <laughs> are you on his side? I thought you were supposed to be here to help me. Now I'm coming closer. When are you going to decide to do something about it? I'm this close to you. I forgot about my man. Now I'm going after you. Well, now she's a threat to you. I'm a, 
threat to you, what are you going to do? Use force. Use force. Okay. What, what's your option? What are you going to do? Taser. <laughs> Actually, taser's pretty good if you've got it out already. If that distance. Remember, it's only effective. They said 20 feet below you. Uh, 10 to 12. and that, Those darts don't fly that straight. They tend to go just about anywhere. So I wouldn't use it at 20. 10 to 12, I'd get right a little closer. Uh, but you would be justified if somebody's coming at you with a knife. But again, is it necessary? No. If you train people on the applications of reasonable force, you don't need to go to this necessary. And that was what the assemblyman said. Well, as long as we trained our officers better to make these choices to salvage lives, instead of just shooting everybody, maybe that would be a better solution than changing how the doctrine, all the revamping it. That's crazy. Uh, that really is. Uh, okay, so we're going to tase this knife wielding mad woman. Yes. We're going to tase her. I'm gasser. I like gas. And gas. I'm using gas. Okay, where are we? All right, we're going to stop here. Uh, police pursuits is up after this one. So the chapter ran a little longer than normal. That's okay. Monday, uh, I think the chapter 9 homework is due. Yeah. 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 If it's not, just check Canvas. Make sure you bring in whatever assignments are due. And I know there is a current event. Yes, right? Current event assignment. Make sure you get it done. Have a good weekend.